Hey guys, it's Jim. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, obviously, I've been playing with Luminar 2018 a whole lot. And one of the things I've been talking about on some of my Facebook Live events is sort of how I like to stack workspaces and approach a photo from a, a standpoint of what are the functions I want to edit or correct in a photo. And those functions are really three. Uh, it's light, it's detail, and it's color. And it's in that order. And so um, what I've done is I've created custom workspaces I use for each one. And then I stack those on separate layers in, in order to get to my finished product, if you will. And so um, I mentioned that on one of these uh, recent events that I'd uh, share uh, some more information about it. So I thought I'd put this video together. And I'm also going to take these uh, workspaces and I'll export them and I'll share them online. So I'll put a link down below where you can go download them for free. Now, um, I'm releasing this video prior to the you know, majority of people having Luminar 2018. So that's fine. Just save these on your desktop and hold on to them. And then you can import them into uh, Luminar 2018 when you get it. And by the way, when you're in Luminar, go to File and Show Workspaces Folder. And you'll see this uh, crazy long, you know, you got Users and then your name and then Library and then all this stuff. And anyway, you'll finally get to where the um, workspaces are. Um, and that's where you want to drag these workspaces. So drag them into that folder. You'll have to find it on your computer. So let's get started. All right. This is a photo I took in Norway, and uh, I love it, but the light's not great and all that sort of stuff. So that's what we're going to start on. So here's my first workspace. I'm just going to um, drag uh, Accent AI to about halfway, um, and that major made a major impact already, as you can see. It really does help redistribute the light. I love it. It's a great filter. Very powerful. Uh, and by the way, I've got a number of filters in each of these workspaces, and I'm not saying this is what you have to use. Uh, it works for me, and I like to do this when I'm just editing, but I don't do this in all my videos because uh, yeah, I don't want to sort of like push my idea. I want everyone to kind of do whatever they want, and, and I like to offer tips and tricks and things like that. So if you like this and can use it, that's great, and use the workspaces, that's great. Um, if you can't, that's okay too, or if you're not interested, nope, no big deal. I'm just sharing things that I uh, discover and like to use. Okay, so adjustable gradient, powerful. I'm going to use it on the next photo. I am here going to use contrast. I'm going to bump that to about 25 or so. And then I'm going to move up smart tone a little bit to help overcome some of the shadow that contrast has created. And by the way, look at the difference in color from that to that. And so there's something to think about whenever you're dragging contrast, you're also going to impact the way the colors are perceived. Um, I'm also going to drop the highlights a little bit. I'm looking at my notes here. And I'm going to also drop the whites a little bit. The sky is a little bit blown out. Uh, it is a single exposure, so, uh, you know, not really blown out, but the clouds are pretty white. I'm going to tone that down a little bit. And a polarizer actually will help here as well. So I'm going to put that at about 20, uh, something like that. Now, there's the before and there's the after. I think we've got a much better looking photo, redistributed the light, and I'm ready to go on to step two. So I'm going to say add a new adjustment layer. And I don't need filters because I've got a workspace for this, and that's called Detail. So in Detail, I'm just going to basically use Clarity and Structure and bump them up a little bit. But because uh, filters by default apply globally, um, I want to apply these two filters to the exact same place. So I'm going to use a layer mask. So instead of grabbing a filter and masking it, I'm going to grab the entire layer and mask that. And I'm in paint. I am now. <laughs> I was on a race. Uh, I'm in paint and I'm just going to uh, paint this uh, edit or this filter uh, layer adjustment onto that part of the photo. So basically all I did, let me show you the mask. There's the uh, mask. All right. I missed a couple spots, but it's close enough for demo purposes. So now I've added detail to the rock face here and the distant uh, sort of mountains. Again, it's a fjord in Norway, so there's a lot of detail, but where I don't want the detail to show up is in the sky and the water. So um, I'm, I've done light and I've done detail. Now I want to do, do uh, color. So a new adjustment layer, close that menu, grab my color workspace, and here's a number of different filters that I like to use for color adjustments. And again, these are all seasoned to taste. You don't really need to do a lot of color adjustment to this photo. And creatively, I kind of don't feel like I want to do it. I like the blues and that sort of thing. I just want to make a couple of minor fixes. So I'm going to bump up the brilliance and warmth a little bit. So maybe something like that. I do want to warm it up a tad. Not a ton, but enough. Uh, just to give it a little bit of warmth. Um, I'm going to go into color balance. And let's see here. 
I'm gonna go, I think in the highlights, I'm gonna go a little bit like that. So I'm just kind of warming up the highlights a little bit, very, very subtle. Um, saturation, I'm gonna go down to this filter. I'm actually gonna reduce the saturation a little bit, uh, something like that, because it is very intense. Uh, but I'm gonna bring up the vibrance a little bit. So let me show you what we've got to on this layer. Let me just turn that off. There's the before, there's the after. Now that I see what I did with the color balance, I don't really like it. So I think I'm just gonna, uh, I'll just delete that filter. I don't really want it. It kind of put a little bit of, too much of a yellow cast on the clouds and I don't really like that. So uh, that's really it. That's light detail and color. Let me show you the before and the after. Very different photo. Uh, the probably uh, what I would do next is add an adjustment layer and I do this usually every time when I'm editing and that is kind of a wild card layer for any kind of last things I may want to do and in this case I want to add some denoise and I actually might uh, do a little bit of saturation and vibrance adjustments. Now I could have added these two filters on the previous layer and done them there but for whatever reason I just like to sort of compartmentalize things and so I like to have my light detail and color edits on those specific workspaces and layers without making changes and then any sort of touch up or final edits that I do I might do um, on a you know subsequent layer so I do want to add some denoise I kind of want to smooth out that water and that sky a bit um, and then I'm gonna filter mask that so let me go ahead and do that I've got a really big brush here so I'm gonna paint that in and again doing that pretty quickly and I'm gonna do it in the water as well so I'm just kind of smoothing that out making it a little bit more glassy and there's roughly where my denoise has gone. So I'm gonna say that's fine. And then saturation vibrance, that'll be a little bit of a global adjustment. I think it's a little too saturated. Well, that's a little too unsaturated for me. Um, but there you go, I just took that down a little bit. And again, just kept it separate from the previous layer. And let me show you the before and after. There's the before and there's the after. Very different photo. The only other sometimes a wild card thing I do on this last kind of wild card layer is a black and white conversion. Uh, now, generally speaking, I like to convert to black and white first and then do all my edits, but sometimes I'll do it at the end. So um, I, I don't really know why, just sometimes I'll, I'll get a photo like this that you know may or may not look great in color, and I'll just say, hey, maybe it'll look kind of cool in black and white. So I'll come in here and do these kind of things and just kind of mess around. I think it looks pretty cool in black and white. Let me show you the before and after of just the black and white. Now that I look at the color, it looks really blue, um, and there it is in black and white. So. Anyway, the point is light detail color and then sort of the wild card layer. Let me show you that on one more photo. And this is a photo I took in downtown Austin where I live. I'm gonna go ahead and get the light um, workspace ready to go. And the reason I chose this one is because it's a night photo. And so this approach of light detail and color works for me on any kind of photo, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna start with Accent AI. I'm gonna bump that up a little bit, not too much. And here's where I'm gonna use the uh, adjustable gradient. I'm gonna drop the exposure in the top and the other thing I like about it is uh, you have contrast here, so I wanna bump that up a little bit, and you have warmth. So I wanna cool that off. I wanna take the sky down a little cooler, something maybe like that. I think that looks better. You can see there's the before and there's the after. Now I'm gonna go into the bottom, and I'm gonna drop the exposure a little bit in the bottom as well. So let's say about 15, and I'm gonna bump up the contrast a significant amount, maybe 40 or so. And you can see the entire filter uh, effect on this uh, on this photo so far. Looking pretty cool, I think. Okay, then I'm gonna go into tone and I'm gonna bump the contrast a tiny bit and the smart tone just a tiny bit. I'm just creating sort of that darker sort of feel and darker mood. You can see the before and after. I think we're getting there. So that's that. I'm gonna go do the same thing as I did before. New adjustment layer, close the filters, get my detail workspace. And again, I'm just gonna use clarity and structure and I just wanna apply those across the entire layer. So once again, a brush mask, and I'm in paint, and I'm gonna do this really quickly here. Um, if it was really a photo edit that I was doing uh, for like my portfolio or something, then I would, I would go a little slower, but I'm doing this quickly just to save you time. You can see my, my mask is gonna be kinda messy, but that's okay. So that's it for detail. You have detail enhancer and sharpening. I use them some, but not a ton. I really prefer clarity and structure. Just a personal preference. They do do uh, different things, but that's just kind of the, the two that I prefer to do. Close the filter catalog, get my final workspace, which is color. And I'm gonna make some more color changes here, uh, or more than I did on the last one. So I'm gonna bump up the, uh, the vividness, 
and I want to take the uh, the temperature down a little bit, something like that. I'm just kind of cooling it off, getting the colors the way I want it to look. Let me see here, color balance. I'm going to go into midtones, and I'm going to just go take that yellow a little bit more to the blue. I'm just kind of cooling off that yellow. Let me show you the before and the after. You can see the impact of the yellow lights on the sidewalk and a little bit tamer look now of the yellow here under the uh, sort of the awning at the Paramount Theater. Okay, color temp. I'm going to do something like that and something like that. I'm sort of creating a little bit more of a twilight feel, uh, more blue hour kind of twilight. And you can see before and after. Not significant, but uh, hopefully you can tell. I'm going to skip golden hour and HSL, and I'm going to bump up the vibrance a little bit. So something about like that. And then I'm going to go into split toning. This is great for adjusting colors. I think the colors look great in the highlights. I just want to do a little bit in the shadows. So I'm going to go something like way over here, kind of into the blues. And then I'm going to go not too saturated, just a little bit, something like that. So there's the before and the after. Just subtle change to the blues, mostly in the shadows. And let me show you where we are with the photo. There's the before and there's the after. So here's where I'd come in and add my last adjustment layer. And this time I will use filters. I'm going to use denoise and I think I'm going to use vignette and call it a day. So once again, you know, just make whatever adjustments you want to denoise. I'm just kind of slapping it on here. Brush it in where you want it to be. I just want it in the sky. And so I'm just doing a really rough job just to show you how I do it. So I've denoised the sky, and then vignette is the last thing. I might just want to draw some attention to um, just the center of the frame. The cool thing is you can place center anywhere you want, so you can sort of move it around a little bit. I think that actually might look a little bit better. And if you want to, you can use inner brightness to brighten it up. Just be careful on things like this. I've got some really bright highlights here on the marquee on the sign. So if I add too much inner light, you can see it's probably going to jack it up a little too much. So... I'm just going kind of gentle. I don't want to totally lose that. But that's an edit. Uh, let me show you the before and after. There's the before and there's the after. Big difference. Uh, I really adjusted the light quite a bit. A little bit of detail work and then a big amount of color work. On the previous one, a lot of light, a little bit of detail, a little bit of color. But that's how I approach it. Light, detail, color. I'll drop a, a link down below to these three workspaces if you'd like to have them. They're free, so no worries. And uh, I hope you enjoy them. And if you enjoy what I do, uh, like the video, leave a comment. I'm happy to hear feedback. I love to hear it, in fact. And so I love interacting with folks that watch my videos. Uh, and if you haven't yet, hit subscribe, share with your friends, uh, and that sort of stuff. It really helps. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks very much. Have a great day, folks. Adios. Take care. And see you later.